Do you study engineering? Do you struggle to keep up? Do you find differential ordinary equations ordinary? Of course not. Do you want to kill yourself whenever you encounter a group project? I fucking do. You wouldn't want to do that anymore after these five tips for you to become a successful engineering student that everybody loves. Okay, all jokes aside, engineering is a very tough degree that troubles most of us. And myself included, but as a third year undergraduate, I do have some tips that may be a help for you. So you need to find out what time you're most productive in. And it is different for everybody. Some people works better in the morning, some works better in the afternoon, some better in the evening. So for me personally, I work well better at night time. In the morning and in the afternoon, my brain just can't think straight. So I will normally devote those times to stuff that doesn't require my brain to process complicated tasks. For example, I'll go to the gym, cook a meal, hang out with friends, do something that doesn't require my brain to think. And it may be different for you, but what I don't want you to think is, for example, um, many people say the early birds get the early worm, you need to wake up early, go to sleep early uh, for your circadian rhythm, but that is true. That is true. It's very important for you to wake up early, get the sunlight exposure as, again, one of my favorite podcasts, Andrew Huberman podcast mentions in one of his episodes. But the thing is, we're all different. Everybody, the 7 billion people, 8 billion people on this planet, we're all different. What works well for most people might not work well for you. You may be that special, special minority. Okay, so you need to identify what works well for you. Just try out different stuff. Try out different time, work in the morning, like 5 a.m. So, and then 7 a.m. and then 9 a.m., 11, 1 p.m., 3 p.m. Try out all of the time frames. Even you can try study at 3 a.m. Maybe that's when your brain functions the best. Who knows? But just try to figure out what time works out the best for you. The second thing is try to solve a problem yourself before asking for help. And that may be from a teacher, a friend, or even the internet, chat GPT. Don't use that before you try a problem yourself first. And this is very important because you need to become self-reliant in trying to tackle new things, new problems when they arise. And if you want to achieve great things in life, or especially in engineering where you need creativity and critical thinking to tackle new problems that no one may have seen before, you are literally the pioneer. You are carving a new path. So even if you ask for help at that point, no one else can help you because no one else has ever seen it before. And so if you're the first person to do something, which is very important in our day and age, to be entrepreneur, engineering, whatever you want to do to achieve great things, then you need to learn how to be self-reliant and creative in tackling new problems. And so try things out yourself, try to tackle, try to solve a problem yourself before asking anyone else for help. And in addition, the rewarding, the sense of satisfaction of actually getting a problem correct is very rewarding. The sense of achievement you get. So do shit yourself. Get your hands on as many practice questions as you can get for any topic. What I like to do is I will do the practice question given out as soon as I learn the fundamental concept. And then after a month, just before I'm about to forget the fundamental concept, I recall them again in my brain by doing those same practice questions that I did right after I learned those concepts. And your brain will most likely forget how to do those questions. So you literally have to, they're basically new questions that you have to deal with again. And because in uni, your professors wouldn't give you tons and tons of practice questions, every practice question is like a gold mine, like a gem, you have to take care of it. You need to do them probably three or four times throughout a semester. That's what I like to do and that works well for me. So do your practice questions, don't be lazy, do them over and over again. Very helpful, trust me, you'll thank me later. Now my number four tip is understand the fundamentals. It is so important for you to understand the basics before diving into more complicated concepts. Because in engineering, it's similar to maths. 
everything builds on top of each other. If you don't understand Pythagorean's theorem in year nine, then in engineering, don't even think about doing any dynamics problem or any materials design problem because all of the design, especially I'm in mechanical engineering, you need to draw a lot of shapes and stuff, blah, blah, blah. All of those designs require basic trigonometry skills and that includes Pythagorean theorem. But if you don't understand them from year nine, then you cannot build on top of that to even more complicated stuff later on. So before you go into more advanced subjects, take your time, learn your fundamentals, do those practice problems that I suggested earlier on. Once you have a strong foundation, you will find it so much easier to grasp the more complicated concepts and questions. Last but not least, know your software. Us engineers, we work with the most advanced technology out there. And software is an integral part of that technology. No matter what engineering you do, in your career, in your study, in your work, in your learning journey, you will have to at least encounter with a couple of different softwares. For example, me with mechanical engineering, we often have to work with CAG, we have to use Python, we have to use MATLAB. And let me tell you, it is not compulsory or mandatory to use any of those softwares. But if you know how to use those softwares, it makes people who doesn't know how to use those softwares look like peasants, literally peasants. Because for example, in one of my um, 10 or five, which is engineering maths units, I know how to, I used MATLAB to perfection in all of the assignments. While someone who doesn't know how to use MATLAB, guess what they have to do? They have to type out in their little calculator, in their little green calculator, like 10 digits of numbers for the decimal place because um, you need the accuracy so you need to try to get as much decimal place as you can and write them down onto your working out paper, write 10 decimal places for everyone working out. And they have to do that probably eight to nine times because you have different starting input values that you have to put through. Whereas me, I'm literally the king. Once I wrote out my MATLAB um, program application, I just put in do do do. I enter two numbers for every nine of those different um, input numbers that we have to give. Throw, boop, boop, boop. Output number, answer. Boop, boop, boop. Output number, answer. Two seconds after writing the code will probably take, took me, I don't know, two hours. But guess what? Those peasants have to write out every little decimal place. And the, guess what? The professor hates to fucking see that anyways. They're not going to actually go through all the decimal places. They're just going to go to the final answer. And if you're wrong, too bad. No one's going to look through your 10 pages of working out. And most of them do get the wrong answers because 10 decimal places, that's not enough for the accuracy at, um, that, at that level of maths. So know your applications. Trust me from my experience. It is worth it to learn it. And plus, you may never know. One day in your career, you might need it and you might stand out from all of the other applicants who want that job but they don't know how to use CAD or use Python like you do. And that's it for all of the five tips. I hope you find them helpful. Maybe get out a little notepad and write them down. If you can't remember them, there's five tips. And if you can't remember them, I will give you one last summarize. Number one is find out what time works well the best for you when you are the most productive. Number two, try to solve a problem before asking for help. That's crucial. That's the number one tip that you have to take away okay, from this video, if nothing else. Number three, grind through the problems. Practice makes perfect and that's so true in engineering. Number four, understand the fundamental concepts. It will help your life so much. It will make your life so much easier later on in your engineering course when you learn more complicated stuff. And number five, know your softwares. I will probably make more of these type of videos in the future, but this is just a start. And please let me know if you enjoy in comment section, in the comment section down below, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.